everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel. Recently I was looking up modifications for the ZD915 desoldering station. Uh, a lot of retro YouTubers um, tend to favour these and they're, they're good. I mean they're, they're inexpensive, they do the job, they're certainly a lot easier than using like an old school suction pump. Um, but they're not perfect. Uh, one of the things that I came across was a power supply upgrade specifically for the, the suction motor. Um, in a normal configuration, uh, it actually goes through this board with a couple of resistors on it. So the main power supply puts out 18 volts, but this motor actually only runs on 12 volts. So this is how they sort of rigged it up to get 12 volts. Um, derived from that 18 volts, just a couple of dropper resistors. This also powers the exhaust fan as well. So uh, one of the things you notice when using these is the exhaust fan, uh, you can actually hear it slow down anytime you activate the actual suction pump. So like I said, what a couple of people have done is replaced these dropper resistors with a little buck converter. Um, so it takes out 18 volts and converts it to 12 volts um, a lot more efficiently than just a couple of massive resistors. So, and it runs a lot cooler. So I actually went and installed this and tested it out and it does seem to improve the suction on the actual desoldering gun itself. But I didn't really take any measurements before doing that. So today what I wanted to do is take some before and after measurements to see if it actually improves the performance of this pump or if it's just all in my head. One of the ways I wanted to do that was just to measure the voltage and current draw from this motor um, when it's wide in its normal configuration. Now this isn't exactly normal because I actually cut the little plugs off. It did have little terminals that all these things plugged into but because I cut it off I just soldered it to the back. So it's it's incredibly dodgy right now, but I do plan on sticking this back in it. So I've powered it on, it's warmed up. I'm just gonna test a bit of the suction power with the default configuration. Let's see if we can get all of this in one hit. Not quite. So there is a little bit of solder left behind on this pad here. It's a bit tricky to tell in the camera, but I can see from looking at it that there is a little bit of solder left over, but you know, it sucked up most of it, which is to be expected when there's not another component mounted there. So I'll give you an idea of what the fan, the exhaust fan does when we pull the trigger. So around the back of it here. You can probably hear just after the pump stops um, that the fan speeds back up again. So it slows down as soon as you pull the trigger and speeds back up once you release it. So oddly enough, the exhaust fan in this thing is actually rated at 12 volts, but when the suction motor isn't running, uh, it's actually receiving the full 18 volts. Um, so when the suction motor switches on, the voltage that goes to the fan is actually dropping to 12 volts, which is what it's supposed to normally run at. Um, so when you're not running the suction motor, the fan's actually running too fast. So that's why it's quite loud. I mean, I also cut out some of the vents at the back here just to give it a bit more airflow, but, and remove the cover from the power supply too, but that's not really what we're looking at here. That was just something I wanted to test out as well. So what I'm going to do is remove this board, replace it with the buck converter, and we'll see um, if that makes any difference to how much power is actually getting to this motor and whether it works any better. So I'll do that. All right, so I've hooked up the buck converter. As you can see, it's putting out 12.9 volts. Um, but the original motor was receiving about 12.17 uh, when it was unrestricted. So pull the trigger 
And hopefully, as you saw on the uh, multimeter, we're getting 12.15 volts. So it's pretty much equal to what the old power supply was giving it. Hopefully you can also tell there's a difference in the fan noise. It is definitely a lot quieter because it's only running at 12.19 volts or 12.9 volts. So when it's restricted before I was, it was going up to about 14 volts. It now pulls about 12.4 volts. Um, so voltages in terms of the unrestricted flow, that's about the same. Um, the restricted flow is showing less voltage. And I think that's a similar kind of thing with the exhaust fan because it's not under full load. Um, those resistors weren't dropping as much voltage. So it was reading 14 volts there, whereas now we're only getting 12 and a half. Anyway, let's have a look at the current and we can just do a little bit of math to work out the power draw. All right, so it's all hooked up nice and dodgy. Let's just see what kind of amperage we pull from this. Oh. So it seems I had a bad connection somewhere. That's probably shouldn't be much of a surprise. Try that again. No? Seems to be going into some sort of protection mode. Why? Huh. I think these alligator clips might have done their time. Yep, oh, okay. We're working again. So, what's the current draw like? 2.37 amps and restricted 1.6. Let's just see if the suction is any different. So I've put some more solder back on this. Well, that's far worse. Might have to clean out the gun. Idiot. Of course I don't have to clean out the gun. The gun's not connected. It's not going to suck anything. Um, clearly I'm in the right frame of mind to be playing with power supplies today. Uh, let's hook this up. All right, now it's working. Well, I would say that is almost exactly the same outcome as the old power supply. So hasn't really made much of a difference. From what I can tell, I did test it out a little further, removing some um, some ICs, some dip packages, and it did seem to work better. But it's entirely possible that was all in my head all along. What I will say is, this is a lot more efficient. The noise from the fan is nowhere near as bad, and it's still blowing out. At the moment, cool air. I'm sure if I put the lid on and use this for a while, things would warm up. But 
I think this exhaust fan running at 12 volts or 12.9 is perfectly fine. And considering it's only a 12 volt fan, that's a lot better than running it at 18 volts. So is it a worthy upgrade? Maybe I'll answer this in front of that camera. All right, so comparing the power consumption before and after, there wasn't that much difference, maybe about two watts uh, with the buck converter. Um, but in general, I think the power supply in these, even though it's not ideal, I don't really think it's worth upgrading unless you're really pedantic about it. Um, but it was an interesting experiment and something I wanted to check out. All right, so just a quick update with this. I actually went ahead and bumped it up to 14 volts. I've been running it that way for about a week. That uh, gives us 13.2 across the motor. So um, obviously it's 10% higher than what it's rated at, but given that you're only using this thing in short bursts, um, I don't think it'll be a problem. And if it does end up shortening the life of this thing, uh, I think it's a worthy trade-off because it does some really good work now. So whether or not that's just coincidence that it seems to perform better, or if I'm actually seeing real world results, I can't be sure, but I can definitely hear the motor runs a bit fast. And before it seemed to take a second to build up that suction, but now it seems almost instant. So it definitely helps when you're working with double-sided boards. So um, yeah, it could be worth a go if you're willing to bump it up a little bit higher. Um, I will also point out there is a, uh, I believe a diode across the motor here. So that's to stop any feedback going into the buck converter when the motor stops running. So keep that in mind. This one already had it on here, but some others might not, I don't know. And also, the unit itself vibrates a lot. So, I mean, I have mounted the board here and you know, the wiring is just in these little screw terminals. This is fine because it's just me using this thing. But I mean, if this was done, you know, in a production line, then it would be extremely dodgy and dangerous, but I'm not worried if it stops working, I'll know because either the cooling fan will stop working or the pump will stop working or both. And I'll know that, you know, one of these wires has come loose. Either that or smoke will rise out from this thing. But yeah, like I said, I'm pretty happy with it now. I think it may, like if you're considering doing this, it may be worth it, especially if you're not too impressed by the performance. Obviously keeping your gun clean and those filters definitely makes the biggest difference. But yeah, this thing's a beast now. Anyway, carry on. This thing was about $15 off eBay. Um, there are cheaper ones. This one's rated for five amps. So uh, it's more than capable of powering this thing. So yeah, I just thought it was worth trying and there you go. Now we've tried it. Um, stick around because we'll go back to covering an actual system next time. Um, every fortnight I'll do a video on a particular system and in some of the off weeks, I'll do a video like this. So I have recently launched a Patreon page, which you'll find links to down below in the description. Um, you'll get access to ad free videos, usually a week in advance. Um, and as of filming this right now, it's only gone live today. So if you have signed up since then, thank you very much. Um, but if you're interested, please consider having a look. Um, yeah, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, but until then, I will be back again with a particular system. So I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. So yeah, quite a bit of corrosion and crap there. Um, which is probably why these leads were not working properly. That makes sense. Oh, shush.